Kiran, we know what the heart says. What does the head say? Yeah, as I said, you know, I'm going to be very similar to the game against Mungret. Uh, I haven't seen Mungret, or likewise, I haven't seen Doom, obviously because of the Corvus. But I have a fair, I have a fair idea of Patrick Swell and what they're made of, and uh, you know, Doom will want to be under full of the health if they're going to cross the line tonight. John, is the neutral here? Yeah, it's a, it's a 50-50 game, Liam. Look, it's a county final. There's going to be nerves early on as well from both teams. I think whoever settles the quickest, you know, has a great chance of the game. But the elements are going to definitely play their part. Well, we are looking forward to this one. And wherever you're watching, hope you're going to sit back, relax, and enjoy the next hour and 20 minutes or so of what should be top quality hurling as we're underway here at the LIT Gaelic Grounds. And straight away... Eddie Stokes has been fouled there, says the referee. It's going to be a free, free going in favour of Dune and an opportunity for them from a long way out to get perhaps what would be the opening score of the game. Cormac Ryan is coming out to take this one just midway between the 65 and the halfway line, striking it into the city in goal as he will be here in the opening half. The breeze not too significant at this moment in time, certainly not on pitch side anyway, as Cormac Ryan lines up this free. The lights are on here in the Gaelic grounds as he strikes that one in. Distance isn't the problem. Accuracy is. First wide of the night goes to the Dune men, but that from a long way out, Kieran. Yeah, to be fair to him, he's first free, and uh, you know it was well beyond the midfield. And I was thinking, you know, to be nice for his confidence, put over the barber. Unfortunately, he just tailed it last minute to the right hand side of the post. So still awaiting the first score of the evening as Killian O'Reilly's puck out. Going to come from the goal away to our right hand side. Looks to go along with this one. It'll drop around the opposite 45-yard line and underneath it, trying to win possession of it over there, was Calvin Carroll. Pulls on this one inside. It might break in there towards Gavin Carey. Behind him and one inside there now. And Patrick Swell have an opportunity. Might have been pulled back. Referee playing the advantage and eventually says the pullback was as he was going through. It's going to be a free. Free going in favour of Patrick Swell, but doing a slight bit exposed inside there. Yeah, without a doubt. And it's turned out a free for Jason. N nice bit of play. Calvin Carroll tapped it down, but Actually, it was probably a goal opportunity if young Kirby popped it out, but I never did get in the free. Jason Galan then with this free, 21 yards out. As you can see, the angle there, this is, I won't say bread and butter for him, but uh, you would expect that he will pop this between the uprights to get the first score of the evening as he looks to the target, to the left-hand side as we watch it here. Down he goes, picks and strikes that one in and well, you could have written it down from the minute the free was awarded but that's a nice handy one for a free taker to get as well pretty much in front of the post and a great start for them. Yeah, without a doubt and Jason I suppose he, he's after being brought into the Limerick Seniors as a third goalkeeper but you know that could change in the next two years because he's a very good player out the field as well. Puck out, broken down and won and brought forward now by Chris Berkery lays this off as far as Eddie Stokes hand pass further out towards Jack Ryan Ryan goes low, did the right thing goalkeeper makes a good stop and the block eventually gets away but Ryan is still in there trying to make a nuisance of himself and trying to win possession of it but it's Patrick Swell who have it Keen Fitzgerald couldn't control it initially and breaks away from him and now Dune have it and they look to come back sensible option there into space was Chris Berkery who initially started that uh, whole movement he's lost possession of it and the ball is now cleared by Patrick Swell down that far side from Calvin Carroll towards the far side of the field might get the return pass again does Carroll right on the 65 yard line off towards Joss Conn a bit of space opens up in front of him peeling off on this near shoulder is John Kirby Kirby striking that one in and Kirby sending it over the crossbar what could have been a goal at one in John Kyo ends up in a fine score for Patrick Swell at the other it does Liam brilliant stuff from Killian O'Reilly and just brilliantly worked up the field Calvin Carroll involved twice great play from Josh Conson and Patrick Swell will be delighted to see Josh start so well leaving the ball off to Patrick Kirby or John Kirby sorry in a great finish Brilliant take from Eddie Stokes from the puck out. Goes forward towards the 45, striking this one in. Is that Dune's first score? The answer to that is yes, Eddie Stokes. They say Kieran Carey, hurling is a simple game. Route one, up with the hand, great skill, turn and strike over the crossbar. 2-1. Yeah, yeah, it looks great and uh, he's going to be handful for Patrick Swell today. As you rightly said, puck out, Young Stokes got the ball right through the middle and over the bar. And a great reply. Uh, to the Patrick Swell score also. Puck out, broken down by Patrick Swell and again over there, Calvin Carroll was trying to win possession of it, away from him though and Dune pick up possession of it but good pressure in there and it's won by Josh Considine. Considine on towards the edge of the semicircle was foul says the referee and this might be a, a word for Chris Thomas, the Dune number five as well, without a shadow of a doubt that was the free Josh Considine down and uh, just receiving a little bit of treatment. The referee having a word now with Chris Thomas inside there. 
for that challenge and Considine who looks uh, to be back on his hands and knees he'll probably be back to his feet hopefully but that is going to be the first yellow card of the night for Chris Thomas and John he can't have too many worries about that no complaints whatsoever Josh was wide open running through and goal he saw his chance and took him out outside of that name a few positional changes very noticeable to see Paddy Maher going in full back marking Jack Ryan OK, Patrick's well defence was open up for that goal chance, but Pod Paddy Maher did a fine job and Munger's danger man last week, Paul O'Brien. Interesting as well to see Keane Enright going in at centre-back instead of Keane Fitzgerald to mark Bob Purcell. Jason Gillan has this free then dead straight in front of the posts, and if the first one was uh, handy enough, this one, he could have closed his eyes and he'd still have knocked that one between the uprights and Patrick's well restore their two-point lead three points to one a good confidence start for the well Kieran. yeah without a doubt and for now john said you know patrick's well definitely won the tactical battle last week against munger and it's obviously the tactical battle here as well today the way the teams are lining out puck out sent down this near side of the field running onto it and winning possession of it down here is bob purcell striking this one in that is a super score from bob purcell picked it up on this near side under a bit of pressure but put it right between the uprights good response from dune and so far Five and a half minutes gone. Five scores. A score a minute. We'll take that, John Kyo, for tonight. All day long, Liam. We'll take that. Excellent work from Bob Purcell there. Good break. Well, Patrick's well did well initially with Keane Fitzgerald breaking the ball down. Purcell picked up the loose one. And he's capable of doing that all night long as well. Killian O'Reilly's puck out. Won by Duvin O'Grady. Back in his own half. Back line plays this one forward. But cut out back there. And Patrick's well looking to turn defence into attack, but a slip just at the vital moment there for John Kirby as seen Cormac Ryan all on his own, very tight towards the inline, goes to ground. Referee says no free forthcoming, has to shorten the grip as he strikes this one up that far side of the field towards Adam Crow. Does well, brilliant pass off as far as Keen O'Donovan, and O'Donovan with a bit of open ground in front of him sets off on a run, strikes this one in. Is that the levelling score? Yes, it is. A super score from Keen O'Donovan. But a beautiful hand pass to start it all down that far side, Kieran, and we're level, three points apiece. Yeah, without a doubt. And, you know, to be fair, it's only on six or seven minutes, but a lot of quality being played. The six scores there have been scored, I think, to two or three from freeze, but the rest of the scores were a very high standard. Killian O'Reilly's puck out again goes down that far side of the field very tight towards that far sideline kept in play though and doing through Mikey O'Brien pops the pass as far as Chris Burkery looks up for the option goes long down towards that far side of the field that's well won out in front here's an opportunity for Dune to go in front for the first time and it's taken very well indeed by Jack Ryan out in front of his man John Kyo like you said he probably would be slots it between the uprights and Dune into the lead for the first time yeah, he's a big danger man for Dune. You know, he's had a very good senior year so far as well. You know, Paddy Maher slipped and you can't give Jack Ryan that kind of opportunity. He'll score them all day long as well. Killian O'Reilly's puck out again down that far side, tight towards the sideline. This time it does go out over the sideline. The well going down that far side the whole time for puck outs, Kieran. Yeah, probably could do with varying a small bit. And I know the game is early, but, you know, I'm just sizing Dune up. You know, they're a fine physical team. They're well organised and, uh, you know, they're a very good team. They're going to take a bit of beating tonight. They sure are, as the line ball going in favour of Dune across on that far side. As John told us beforehand, they are the raging hot favourites here to win county title number two in a row are the Dune men, but Patrick's well will certainly have something to say about that, and that is a mistake there from the Dune man from the line ball, capitalised on brilliantly by Josh Considine, and that's what you need when you're the underdog, Kieran, to capitalise on mistakes like that. Yeah, without, without a doubt, but you need, you, you, you need to put them over the bar all day long, you know, and as I said, it's four points apiece, nip and tuck, and I suppose like two boxers meeting each other, they're testing each other out and f getting the feel for each other. They certainly are, and after nine minutes or so of the opening half thus far, we're Thoroughly enjoying it here as this ball has come out over this near stand sideline and gone for a line ball in favour of Dune. And an opportunity for them from well inside their own half to turn defence into attack. And it's that man, Cormac Ryan, who, as John told us before the game, was uh, an injury concern coming into tonight. Certainly not showing any ill effects of that quite yet as he takes this line cut. It's a good cut up this near side, but Patrick's well have numbers back there. Winning possession of this one. Hand pass away now. Finds Joachim McGrath. The referee has said just couldn't hold it, fouled, and this is going to be a free for Dune. We talked about mistakes before the game, John. That's one of them there. Yeah, just a bit unlucky there. You know, the ball looked to be hopping 50 50 call from the ref. You can see why he gave it. Unlucky for Joachim McGraw, all the same. First chance for him to play ball for Jack Ryan. Sure is. One point to his name from an open play so far in this Mint Catering Premier Under 21 hurling final. 
And an opportunity here for Jack Ryan to put Dune into the lead. Yet again, four points apiece at the moment. He's going to strike this one to the city in goal. The breeze not all that significant as he picks this one and strikes it. Looked as though the hurley was going to fall out of his hands as he struck it, but he managed to maintain the hurley and he's gotten his first point from a free, his second point of the night here on and Duna back into the lead. Yeah, nice little tester for him there now, and, but he was equal to the challenge, put it straight over the bar and actually as he, was, as he was rising the ball, all I could see was Joe Dean. He had the exact same style as Joe Dean when he was rising it. Puck out from Killian O'Reilly. Well won back there now and Dune looking to bring this one away. That's well won by Mikey O'Brien. Was fouled. The referee was playing the advantage. In fact, it was uh, Chris Thomas that had won the possession of it, was going away with it, fouled, and the referee has awarded a free now in favour of Dune back in their own 65-yard line. And an opportunity here. The referee just wants to have a word. Jonathan Hayes, by the way, is our referee this evening. He just had a word with uh, linesman Dunnacaw Callaghan on the far side who spotted something. And it's Joachim McGrath who's going to be spoken to by the referee. Didn't see what happened there, John. Kieran. No, Anybody? I didn't see either. And uh, obviously, you know, it's a yellow card. So obviously, one of the umpires are, are sideline. Uh, obviously spotted what he did. And obviously, Pulner did he flick a doom player off the ball. But, you know, he was fairly adamant to referee with his yellow card. Yeah, I think it might have been for the initial late hit. He tried to... Uh, Run down the field, getting away with it, but yeah, Jonathan Hayes was spotting him. Having none of it. So the free then for Dune and an opportunity for them. It'll be just on halfway when he strikes this one. Will Jack Ryan, he has struck that one well. Beautifully between the uprights. Second point from a free. Third of the night for Jack Ryan. And Dune go into a two-point lead, John. Yeah, great striking again from Jack Ryan. Look, Dune seem to have settled now after Patrick's Wells early for six or seven minutes. To the last three scores now, you know, they're, they're getting on top of it. Maybe the fact that Dune hadn't played in a couple of weeks, as we say, Kieran showed in the opening few minutes, but certainly they've settled into the groove now as they play this one forward again. But Patrick's well have the man back there to win possession of this one as they come away with this now. Flicking this one forward towards the attacking 45-yard line. Just too much on it, though. And it's won by Duvan O'Grady. The giant captain lays this one off as far as Keane O'Donovan back in his own half-back line. Now finds Jack Ryan advanced from his position of number 14. Starting out around the middle of the field. Getting a touch to it. Enough to take it towards Mikey O'Brien. And O'Brien has this one in the love and sends it towards this near side of the field. Good ball sent inside now towards Adam English. Tight towards this near stand sideline. He's the man that Johnny Keogh told us beforehand that Patrick Swell would have to watch out for. They've done a good job on him so far and they've uh, won a free out as a result of Adam English pulling the jersey of the Patrick Swell man. So the free away yeah. to our right hand side. Very good defender there, Shane Hannon. But the last two attempts now, the Patrick Swell went up, went up, up here. You know, there was no score at all. So it would be slightly worrying for me. There's a third one going up again now and it's out in a row as well. Keen in right. Took the free. Porrick Joyce picked it up back there and plays this one towards that far side of the field. But again... Back there goes Adam Carrick to win possession of this for Patrick's well. Plays it up the centre of the field. Can't, couldn't control it around the middle of the field on Harmon and goes out over that far sideline. But at last touch, the Dune man, I think it might have been Keane O'Donovan at last touched and it's gone for a line ball in favour of the underdogs across on the far side. Six to four. Been a while now, Jan, since Patrick's well got a point. They could do with a score to settle themselves. Yeah, badly need of a score, Liams. Kieran rightly pointed out. Last three balls gone up. We'll see a different now with Gavin Carey with this one. They need it. Gone to the left and wide, but has four attacks in a row now. They've yielded nothing. Even though it's just two points, I, I think Damien Glenn will be fairly worried at this stage. It's just the first wide for Patrick's well, but as we say, the ball going in and coming back out again, the well will want to increase that. That's a brilliant take in the air from Bob Purcell. He was under all sorts of pressure. Lost the hurley, but afterwards, Jack Ryan towards that far side now. Duvan O'Grady trying to keep this one in play. Does down the far side on towards the 21. Looks up for the option, switches it. Good vision to find Bob Purcell near side of the field. Purcell was under pressure. Good defence from Keane Inright who put him under pressure. Forced a mistake and Patrick's well come away with this one out. Tight towards this near sideline. Forward it goes. Won by Patrick Kirby. Lays it off as far as Keane Inright in support. And Inright launches this one forward. No one at home though from a Patrick's well point of view. And do have the numbers but the hand pass isn't great. And John Kirby picks this one up. And Kirby says thank you very much to that mistake. Bad mistake from a Doom point of view, Kieran, but Patrick's well will take that. Yeah, without a doubt. And I see two teams are going with a sweeper there, and the sweeper for Doom actually, a bread and butter ball, dropped a good pressure by Gavin, Ker Gavin Carey, broke out to John Kirby in a good score. 
Back to one, the sharp puck out from Dara Ryan finds Porig Ryan, launches this one forward. The direct route at the second attempt, but it's picked up back there and brought away now by Patrick Swell towards the defence of 65. Hand pass off, finds Calvin Carroll. Carroll dead straight in front of the post, strikes that one in. The minute it left his stick, he knew it was going to the left hand side and wide. Patrick Swell's second wide in a row, but uh, well, they're uh, getting the efforts closer to goal, if nothing else. Still six to five, the sharp puck out. Comes this near side towards Cormac Ryan. Very tight to the sideline. The Patrick Swell mentors reckoned he was over it. The linesman on this near side, Lee Sullivan, having none of it. And Patrick Swell pick up possession of it. And Shane Hannon towards this near side. Jason Gillan launches this one forward. Again, the work rate of John Kirby might come out ahead of Sean Maher. Kirby got a touch to it, but he fouled Sean Maher. And going to be a free out. And I suppose when you're playing a two-man inside full forward line, Kieran, you need a bit better delivery than that. You do without a, without a doubt, Chase. You know, probably there was a lot of grass there, really, and uh, he just kind of cut it too tight. Although young Kirby did his level best to get there, but he kind of gave a, a bit of a push in the back, and without a doubt, it was a free out. But Keane Fitz there and Patrick Sweller, he's mapping up there. He's holding very well here behind at centre back, so he'll need to for the hour for Patrick Sweller to have any chance. Chris Thomas takes this free, sends it down that far side, looking to uh, get onto it. Was Adam Crow over there? Jack Ryan there too pass away but it's Paddy Maher for Patrick Swell sends it near side of the field where it's picked up though by Dune and Cormac Ryan hand passes this one off towards the far side and Keno Donovan now further back again as Dune have the numbers back there and Cormac Ryan again stayed around the middle of the field was falling as he had possession of it took a step too many with it says referee Jonathan Hayes and a free going in favour of Patrick Swell and an opportunity for Jason Gillan John Kyo to level things up at the midway point yeah, big opportunity for Jason. Um, he's had a quiet game so far, and Patrick will really need him to fire a bit more. But just as something on Kieran touched on there, Keane Fitzgerald, it was him that actually came out with that ball from the from the last rock before Patrick Swell won the free. He's now standing talent at centre back, and you know he's had a very very good championship so far. But Jason has his chance now to level it. Two points from free so far. Testing the breeze, he sees that the breeze is at his back for this free here. And an opportunity for Jason Gillan. Two points, as I say, to his name so far, both from freeze. And an opportunity to put us on level peggings for what would be the third time in this game this evening as Jason Gillan looks almost effortless as he strikes that one between the uprights. There's the water break. We're level at six points apiece, Kieran. Yeah, and if you size up Jason, you know, the, the more I see him and the more I kind of work up close to him, He's turning out the stamp of iron, his whole frame, his striking ability, even from f even from freeze. But to be fair, six points apiece just before the water break, I'd say would be a true reflection of the match up until this point. John, you go along with that? Yeah, I agree completely. You know, both sides have dominated maybe Patrick's well the first five or six minutes, doing the next five or six, and then the last couple of minutes before the water break, fairly even. It's the one thing I will say about it so far, Liam, it's a very, very high standard we're watching so far. It certainly is, and I suppose for conditions uh, I hate going on about it and people at home will say will he ever stop talking about conditions because they're fine at the minute but we're getting a cracking game of hurling here on in fairness yeah without a doubt and uh, and, and i suppose dune waiting in the wings to get a bit of game time obviously has uh, played dividend for him because the quality to be fair in the 14 15 minutes and the desire from both teams you know i have to say is top class but uh, sets of managements just having their couple of words with their teams down here beneath us, taking the opportunity of the water break. Uh, as a manager now with Patrick Swell here on senior team, what way does the water break work? Are you in favour of it, against it? Do you feel it kills momentum or is it a good thing from time to time? Well, I'd be hugely in favour of the water break if it was 45 minutes aside, similar to the soccer, uh, but it isn't. And, uh, you know, it, I suppose the team that can manage it the most usually are the team that will win you know it does of course it breaks up the momentum and it can give the opposition uh, a bit of a kick start as well but to be fair to Patrick Swell you know they are still there with six points apiece and as John rightly pointed you know there's a few of our forwards that haven't got going yet and uh, you know this water break I, I suppose it's with us now during the coronavirus and uh, it looks like it'll stay with us until the end of the year no? play to resume then with the puck out from the Dune goalkeeper, Darrell Ryan. That's where it's going to restart from. Away to our left-hand side. Sides are level six points apiece. Here at the LIT Gaelic Grounds this evening in this Mint Catering Premier Under-21 hurling final. A bit surreal this evening. 
zero atmosphere around the uh, LIT Gaelic grounds as play resumes with the puck out then from the goalkeeper as we say Dara Ryan sends this one long down this near side of the field interesting development here the scoreboard clock actually stopped as well during the water break here within the stadium and referee Jonathan Hayes put his finger to the watch in the air to restart the stadium clock here so interesting developments as Doom go forward now with Jack Ryan striking this one in Jack Ryan but it goes to the right hand side and wide the referee is going for his notebook that ball was right and wide uh, oh he's just making a note of the Patrick's well man I think yeah. as opposed to registering the point just a little bit of lip there that ball was wide I think uh, referee Jonathan Hayes is now coming on this near side I, I, I think what actually happened there now uh, Paddy fell and he, he actually tripped him in this, on the one go and uh, prob probably gave advantage and he's after to realise it now so I think he's yeah. possibly given them a free yeah thought I suppose that the ball had gone over the crossbar and then when realised that it hadn't he's given the free so that's exactly what has happened so an opportunity for Jack Ryan then it certainly was wide we were right behind it here and Jack Ryan has this opportunity three points to his name so far two frees and one from open play half of Dune scores coming from Jack Ryan and on the other side Jason Gillam with three points from frees for Patrick Swell Josh Considine and John Kirby the other two scorers Eddie Stokes Bob Purcell and Keno Donovan the other scorers for Dune so far as this one comes in from Jack Ryan well if it's a battle of the free takers it's a uh, hundred percent from both of them so far and Jack Ryan Extending Dunes lead back out to one again, seven to six. Free takers are accurate, John. Yeah, they are lame. Look, what I've noticed from them throughout watching them over the years, Jack the last three or four years, Jason, since he was fairly young, and Kieran has it right bang on the money. The strikes are so good. It's just a clean strike from free. It's great to see as well. Ball sent down this near side of the field, and Dune again looking to win possession of it. The hand pass back finds Bob Purcell. Purcell going forward with this one on towards the 21 still going Bob Purcell strikes it in the umpires have a look at each other and that's gone between the uprights the Patrick's well management team aren't happy they reckon Paddy Maher was taken out of it there but Bob Purcell put the ball over the crossbar gets the point for Dune and extends their lead eight points to six the Patrick's well management not happy Kieran. Yeah, Paddy's a big boy. He'll be able to look after himself. That was a great that was a great score with Bob Purcell. It's a one two down the wing straight over the bar. Puck out to come from the goalkeeper Killian O'Reilly and we wonder why the well have this attitude when they get to finals with talk like that puck out sent down this near side of the field looking to win possession of it Gavin Carey tight towards this near side two Dune men around him still manages to get the flick away eventually the red jerseys are there but it's taken away from them and the hand pass off now finds Jason Galan. no score yet from play in this so. county final but that has now been righted and it's gone inside the left hand upright a fine score from Jason Galan, and a bit like he's freeze that looked pretty effortless as well Kira. yeah but it was a work rate I suppose two, two or three seconds beforehand and the turnover just Constantine that made the point I suppose that's as good as two or three points when we get a score like that 8-7 one between them puck out down that far side lost in the air by Calvin Carroll but will win back possession of it against his opposite number Eddie Stokes and lays this one off as the effort comes in from a long way out the umpires have a look at it but say it's gone to the right hand side and wide third wide of the night for Patrick's well and the wides count three to the well one to Doon by my reckoning and on the scoreboard it's Doon who lead eight points to seven as we approach the 21st minute of the opening half puck out sent near side of the field well won again by Josh Considine in the middle of the field pops the pass near side of the field towards Jason Gillan back again inside it goes towards Patrick Kirby back across the centre to Considine who continued his run that is a super score started by Josh Considine and finished by Josh Considine he's second of the night Kieran. yeah I, I suppose second best scorer of the game in my opinion the first one was Patrick Kirby the combination was fantastic there support play was brilliant and the finish was absolutely top class by Josh as well. We wouldn't think, John, that Patrick's well were the underdogs here. No, a very, very even game. You know, but that's as Kieran said. We saw last week with Josh Considine. He three three shots in the space of a minute towards the end of the game. All went off target. It was his first game back after a bit of a layoff. You know, he's in fine form today. He got the he turnover from the for the last score. He scored a point already, and that's the second. And they have a free here down this far side of the field for an opportunity to, for them to go one to the good. And Jason Gillan, well, this is uh, a tighter angle. About 
as you can see, 58, 59 yards out from goal, about 10 in from the uncovered stand side here of the LIT Gaelic grounds. And Gillan stands over this one. And again, as Kirhan says, the stamp of his older brother, Aaron, the way he takes freeze too, holds the hurley upright and then picks it and strikes it. Looks to be good. The result is a very good one from Jason Gallan, and they're well back into the lead, Kieran, and they've done well since the water break, 9-8. Yeah, without a doubt. And, uh, you know, they're just asking a few questions to do now and just let them know that they're going to be around for this full quarter of the water break. Puck out from Dara Ryan down that far side of the field. Again, Adam English puts up his hand, wins possession of the breaking ball this time and sets off on a run. He's got plenty of pace as English lays this towards Adam Crow. Crow couldn't control it though, and Patrick Sweller back there to pick up possession of it. Joachim McGrath picked up a yellow card early in this game, plays this one forward. The Doom man has lost the hurley. That's uh, Chris Thomas back there, has to play a bit of football with it, takes it away from the danger area, and Sean Maher is there to offer a bit of support. Patrick's well in there trying to make a nuisance of themselves as well, trying to win possession of it on Carroll tight towards that sideline, but Doon have done exceptionally well to bring this one forward up towards the attacking 65-yard line. Looked to be a foul there. Referee plays the advantage, and Bob Purcell spins away out of the challenge, and Bob Purcell, that'll be a great score if it goes over. It does not because the referee has awarded a free instead, and it's going to be a free in. I think it might have just dropped tail to the right and wide but the referee Jonathan Hayes has given the free in deserved it in fairness did Bob Purcell good strength from him yeah without a doubt and the ref to be fair up to this point is you know he's been a fair all game and uh, you know as you rightly pointed out Bob Purcell he's a handful there for Keenan right Keane dragged him back the referee gave him the advantage his weights at sea but they're over the bar not went wide and played advantage here's Jack Ryan on the free four points so far for Jack Ryan three of them from freeze in this game in line with the right hand up right here just on the 65, it's as good as a 65. As this opportunity here for Jack Ryan, picks this one and strikes it in, right between the black spot, and we are level pegging again here at the Gaelic Grounds. Jack Ryan with his fourth free, fifth point of the night. Four frees and one from open play. We're level again, John. Yeah, just look, I mentioned it a few minutes ago, the clean striking from the free takers, just another example of it. You know, it's a very, very tight game, Liam. You know, these type of games, oh, yeah. just as well, well marked there by Chris Burkery with the hook. But in these type of games, how crucial a goal will be. Zotton won semi-final last week. Munger had two early chances in that second half. Couldn't take him. Eventually got one. Didn't prove enough. One goal here will be crucial. Especially on final night as well, Kieran. The goals probably will be at a premium. So the first team to raise a green flag will be happy enough not only happy enough but it's going to have a huge bearing on the game and actually in the first five minutes both teams had an opportunity of a goal and, and they didn't take the opportunity ball sent forward from do now adam english launching this one forward dropping inside there referee watches closely and again spots a foul on the patrick's well defender and this is an opportunity now for patrick's well to clear their lines killian o'reilly away to our right hand side 25 and a bit minutes played of the opening half here we are level. The scoreboard here in the Gaelic grounds has now been changed to reflect that as the ball played forward. It beat everybody and John That's Kirby right. pops the pass away towards Gavin Carey. Is this his first score of the evening? Yes, it is. Patrick's well back into the lead again and Gavin Ker Carey with the point. John Kirby did well inside there as well, John. Yeah, brilliant work from Gavin Carey to pop it over the bar, but it's brilliant work initially from John Kirby. Liam, he's... He's a fantastic talent. Kieran might be able to tell you a bit more about him, but the few times I've seen him this year so far, he's, he's just been outstanding. Doon through Chris Thomas looking for an instant response. The referee's playing an advantage. There was none forthcoming, so he's brought it back for a free right in the halfway line, but just taking up that point, John Kirby. Seems like a right old talent you have out there. Yeah, without a doubt. He's, he's one for the future. He's a brother of Patrick, and actually two of them very, very different styles, very, diff very different players and uh, yeah as i said he, he, he's one for the future and uh, he will make it yeah the will will probably need to look at their discipline and that's something they need to be emphasizing very strongly at half time because it's keeping doing in the game are they not too sure is it four or five from freeze now four from freeze so far but if you uh, could almost put this one down as a, a fifth one the referee jonathan hayes just wants everybody back and uh, we were waiting for a, a dry slitter to arrive and thankfully it has arrived and here's an opportunity now for Jack Ryan yet again 
Five points in the night, four frees, one from open play, and an opportunity here with 27 and a bit minutes played to bring us back on level pegging again. Patrick's well, 10, do nine at this moment in time as the free is sent in from Jack Ryan. It's going in. Well, I put the commentators course on him, John. Right yeah. and wide. Just, just maybe that bit far. It was just outside the 65 for him. Didn't come up right either, which was a surprise. Just didn't kind of rush the strike in the end, but be disappointed with it will jack the way he struck him so far so patrick's well still have that one point lead as killian o'reilly's puck out is sent towards that far side of the field the hand of jason galan went up couldn't win possession of it the ball breaking down john kirby again putting his man under pressure on the far side assisted by owen carroll over there ball eventually into the hand of the patrick's well man that might have been jason galan but the referee has said he's taken a step too many or two and this is going to be a free out, free going in favour of Dune and an opportunity for them to clear their lines from just outside their own 21 yard line. 28, almost 29 minutes played. One point lead for Patrick Swell. 10 points tonight in the Mint Catering Premier Under 21 hurling final of 2020 on a year that will never be forgotten on a date that for Limerick supporters will never be forgotten either. The 19th of August, two years ago, we were up in Croke Park celebrating and I suppose, uh, well, we're in the LIT Gaelic grounds this evening with nobody here. And on the 20th of April, two years ago, there was, uh, well, quite a lot of thousands of people here. But uh, how times have changed. But who's going to be celebrating on the 19th of August 2020? Will it be Patrick's? Well, will it be Dune? It'll be Red Letter Day for one of them as Dune come forward now with Chris Berkery. Heading forward, the hand pass from the 45 towards the far side, and Eddie Stokes. Stokes on towards the 21, lays this ball back a bit too much on it, though. And Joachim McGrath, who's covered a lot of ground, almost won it back for Patrick Swell, but instead it's Chris Berkery for Dune across towards Keno Donovan. One point to his name so far. Make that two now in this first half. And that a point for Dune. Looked as though Patrick Swell had it under control back there, Kieran. But Keno Donovan gets his second point of the night. Yeah, and I suppose it was a very hard earned score, if you like, and Patrick Swell nearly got the turnover. But in fairness, I'm impressed with the Patrick Swell's work right now. They're after up in, up in the ante, especially in their forward line. Ten points apiece as the puck out comes from Killian O'Reilly. Down the far side of the field it goes. Might break towards John, John Kirby, who has it from that far side. That is a super score from John Kirby. Didn't know too much about it. Did exceptionally well to control it. His third point of the night. And the well back in front again. And John Kyo, this is turning out to be far from one-way traffic. No, it's very, very tight game. Liam. That's just an out outrageous score from John Kirby. No right to be shooting from there even, let alone put it over the bar. It was just interesting to see six times they've been levelled up before that score. It just shows the nature of how, how, how tight these teams are. The referee is awarded a free and now he's going to advance it a couple of yards as well because the Patrick's well players just wouldn't keep out of the way. The doom man who was shaping up to take it, I don't think he was ever going to strike it anyway because uh, it was Bob Purcell that was standing over it. Jack Ryan wasn't there, so, but uh, he very smartly won a further 10 metres or 10 yards or whatever it is, or maybe 20 by the looks of it from what was the 65. It's been advanced to almost the 45, and here's an opportunity now for Jack Ryan. It's definitely get more than the allocated 13 anyway, Liam. <laughs> Here it comes from Jack Ryan. It's in, and it's over the crossbar. And the referee has said that will do us for the first half. It's been a high quality first half. The sides are level at 11 points apiece, level seven times in that opening half. And Kieran, I'm sure the well will be very happy with this position that have taken this coming into the LIT Gaelic grounds tonight. Yeah, without a doubt. And thankfully, you know, the rain has stayed away. Conditions have no bearing in it, and two teams, to be fair, you know, they're contesting the final bottom going full tilt. And uh, if I was the Patrick Swell management now, at this particular moment in time, my message would be very strongly discipline. Even that last free by Jack Ryan, it probably would have been difficult enough, but a bit of back chat, he brought up 20 yards and turned into a simple score. But o overall, a very good game and very hard to call it even at halftime. John? Yeah, same as Kieran, really, Liam. Very, very hard to call. You know, Dune will be disappointed with some of their forwards. We talked about Adam English before the game. Very impressive season so far in this Under-21 Championship. Just hasn't really gone from, you could argue that Shane Hannon's done a flaking job in him as well, marking him. You know, from, from Dune's point of view, they kind of need Bob Purcell to step up a bit more. He's done well when he's been in possession, but has, he hasn't been on, on it enough, really. 
No, but from Patrick's Wells' point of view, they'll be absolutely delighted with this. It's, it's Dune and Paddy Coleman that'll be answering or posing a lot of questions to his team at halftime. Well, it is half time here in the LIT Gaelic Grounds for the Mink Catering Premier Under 21 Hurling Final. And it's as you were when we started, none the wiser as to who's going to be crowned champions tonight. It's been a cracking first half. The sides are level, doing 11 points, Patrick's well 11 points. We'll take a short break. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Behind the scenes work, I suppose, has to do with the pitch here in the Borg Garden in Ratkeel. Um, there's a constant maintenance going on here, um, fundraising for that, and fundraising fundraising is, is probably a huge part of of the background work of most clubs, and we're no different to, to any any club from that aspect, really. You know, the draw, the club Limerick draw, has been massive fundraiser for us that down through the the past. 10 or 15, 20, 30 years even going going right back. Um, we anyone that joins a draw with us, I suppose our message to them is you're supporting the club number one and you're also supporting the county. And you might ask, what are we doing with the with, with the funds? Um, in the last 10, 10 or 12 years we've we've done a huge amount of development here in the here in the Bar Garden. We started out there 12 years ago. We put in a a, a sand-based all 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 weather pitch here. So we moved from basically a pond here for six months of the year to having a pitch that's playable 12 months of the year now, and it's made a huge difference to us. Since then, we've gone and we've put uh, team shelters in place, the the pit side railing down one side of the pitch. We've bought a new mower. We've um, Last year we've put up a spectator stand, and you know, without without the club Limerick draw, none of those would have been possible. Really, they didn't cover everything. No, that it you know the funds from the draw doesn't cover all the costs, but it's 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 a huge benefit to the club, and we're just encouraging as many people as possible to join it from our from our point of view. Fifty percent of what we collect, we keep, and. Um really that runs our club for the year and also puts as you can see back here like everything goes back into the thing and it's it's basically building for the future you know um people before us that started the draw many of them have passed on from here the likes of patsy the hatty and johnny kindy and the likes but now we're doing the same and hopefully we can just pass it back on to the the future coming behind us and maybe they might make more improvements but thanks to the limerick draw we wouldn't be able to do it without it Club Limerick Draw is a massive to effort of viability in the Pearshick. As you can see here, um, the AstroTurf surface and the hurling wall and the amount of use it gets on a weekly basis from under six up to senior football, hurling and camogie is, you know, per square inch. This is just massive use, as I say, for all those for first touch, etc. So without the club draw, you know, it would make it very, very difficult. You know, every one of us grew up hitting off the gable end of a of a shed I know grown up myself I would have geez, I, I, I'm kind of envious of seeing the six to seven year olds coming in now I'd love to have it all over again when I see them all hitting against the wall so yeah it's great to have this facility absolutely well we're glad to see a lot of uh, our club members uh, uh, feeding into the you know the underage Limerick teams and senior teams so yeah ball to hand is massive in the game of hurling first touch yeah 
Absolutely. You know, it's all about the underage because the underage is the future. But, you know, the adult players gain from it as well. But uh, absolutely. And you can see the joy from behind me there, all the guys playing away with the hurling wall. Um, you know, it's not, it just, it just is not the hurling wall, but the club draws facilitated. We have three pitches here now. Uh, two sand based, one grass with floodlights. Now we've obviously got the benefit of sports capital grants, which are huge to kick start it. But to get over the line, the the knock on benefit of the club draw is is what really what gets us pushing on. I'd say come down on a Saturday morning to Napiersik. I'd say come down any evening during the week to Napiersik and see the benefits that all the different age groups are getting from the use of the facilities. And I say that 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 will sell itself. <laughs> You're welcome back to the LIT Gaelic Grounds where the Patrick's Well team talk. I'm psyched up after that, Kieran. <laughs> Plenty of encouraging words. They'll be very happy with where they are at halftime. Yeah, without a doubt. As I said, you know, uh, the one area that I would be kind of saying to them, uh, for this period, especially for the first quarter, is uh, discipline and discipline not to be given away silly freeze because you know they have the measure of doing. You know they're plenty good enough to drive on and. Uh, if they can kind of you know improve in their discipline and stop giving away silly scores uh, i'd give them a, a very good chance well it looks as though patrick's well have made a change daniel fisi has come on the field of play we'll tell you who's gone off in just a minute on the other side of that john kyo there was harsh words i'd say in the dune team talk at halftime i would imagine so liam they just they just haven't fired really and that's that's just the basic basics of it like the over and Jack Ryan with six points in that first half, five of them coming from freeze. Bob Purcell and Keane Donovan two each, but nothing from Adam English like we talked about him before the game. You know, he's a big, big talent, but you know, it's all about finals then. That's when you want your big talents to arrive. Owen Carroll is the man that has made way for Patrick Swell, and as I say, replaced by Daniel Fisi, who's come on for the second half. And straight away, the well trying to win possession of it from the throw in, just on the 65 yard line. Bit of a scrum about to develop here, but uh, taken away by uh, Jerry O'Brien for Doon, but only into the grateful arms of Keane Inright down that far side. Now, here's an opportunity as Jason Galland striking this one from that far side looks to be going just to the left hand side and wide. First wide of the second half goes the way of the Patrick Swellman. Five wides in this game so far by them. Level on the scoreboard at 11 points apiece as play resumes with the puck out. Sent down the centre of the field. Well gathered down here by Adam Crow. Surrounded though by Patrick's well men. Trying to win back possession of it in there. It's uh, Keel Enright who's back there foraging for the ball. Eventually it comes away in the hands of Josh Considine. Further out towards Patrick Kirby down that far side. Plays this one forward now. Jason Gillan might get to it. Two Dune men around him. Eventually one of them comes away with it. The referee has said Jason Galan has fouled him. He's absolutely disgusted at the concession of that free. But it's a chance for Doom with the elements at their back here and an opportunity as Jack Ryan is making his way out from the full forward line back to his own 65 yard line. It's a long way out, John, but the elements with him. Yeah, the early it is, a, it is a bit swirly, but it looks to be swirling in his favour at the moment. Cormac Ryan was also wanting to take it. He eventually hands the ball over, but you know, from this distance, really, is it a pot shot more than anything? You know, it's maybe Jack could be better off at the around the edge of the square, hoping for a break. What would you do, Kieran? Would you bring him out to take this free? Yeah, to be fair, it's my first time watching him. You know, and he's pretty accurate up to now. He has the makings of a of a good free taker. You know, everything about him is he is a free taker. And the most important thing for me, really, is when he hits it. You know, it's rather over the bar, or else it's dead. It's one of the two. There's an injury to player just in the middle of the field that's what the uh, hold up is referee just having a, a word there just making sure everything is all right I think it might be Adam Crow that picked up the injury for Doon Keen Inright is uh, just checking on his well-being to make sure he's all right he is so the helmet is back on and here is the free now for Jack Ryan six points in the opening half five of them from freeze looking to get the first score of the second half here Striking it into the Innes Road goal to our left-hand side. He struck that one well. The umpires have a look at it. And that is a fine score from Jack Ryan. First point of the second half. He's seventh of the evening. Six of those from freeze. 
and that's an area where Patrick's well will have to just as Kieran touched on there a few times in the first half and again at half time Patrick's well will have to tighten up on because when you have a free taker as we have on either side they can take full advantage of any freeze from many positions as the puck out won by Doom down this near side again they go forward with it breaks back there under a bit of pressure Shane Hannon tried to win it it comes out over this near sideline Donnacho Callahan reckons at last touched the Doom man it's going for a line ball in favour of Patrick's well Keen in right to take this one referee is just holding up play because Doon are making a substitution down here beneath us and is coming Jack Downey and there's a bit of reconfiguration I think to the Doon team here as a result of this substitution there's no one gone off yet I think it might be Jerry O'Brien that's uh, coming off it is so Jerry O'Brien goes off and on in his place goes Jack Downey so play to resume with the line ball from Patrick's well down this near side Keen Enright not the best of balls as Dovin O'Grady picks up possession of this one on he goes towards the 21 still going Dovin O'Grady gets the shot in and over the crossbar Patrick's well will be glad that it went over as opposed to under Dovin O'Grady left go a long way with that gets the score and do now lead by two points John yeah brilliant work from Dovin O'Grady did well to catch the sideline cut in the first place you know, maybe the fact that Patrick's well have given away so many frees let him in a bit rather than, you know, fouling him before he got to the 21. But it could have been a big, big error from Patrick's well's point of view. Lucky to get away with a point. Adam Crow launches this ball forward. Dune have certainly started the better of the two in the second half. Patrick's well will just need to settle themselves a small little bit now as there's another opportunity here now as Keen O'Donovan goes through, sends it in and sends it over the crossbar. Gaps beginning to emerge, Kieran, and the Patrick's well backs. Yeah, but to be fair, we're defending well, but the last two puck outs there on a half forward line, you know, the ball is coming out too easy, it's coming out too soft, so our half forward line definitely needs to up to give our to give our to give our defence a small bit of protection. I think it's the first time that there's been three points between the sides in the game so far, and do lead by those three points now. Well will be looking for a score just from the start of the second half as it's gone out over the far sideline despite the best efforts of Josh Considine to keep it in play. Line ball down that far side. Linesman Lima Sullivan just uh, telling the Doom player to bring it back a couple of yards. And this line ball and an opportunity for Doom again to launch another attack. They're playing with the breeze in the second half. A second half that's five minutes old. We were level at 11 points apiece at the short whistle. So far, three points without reply for Doom at the start of this second half. And here they come on the attack again with Bob Purcell. Two points to his name in the first half. Purcell striking this one in, but it goes to the right-hand side and wide. Good defence from a Patrick's well point of view, putting him under pressure. That, for me, John, is the third wide of the night for Doon. Yeah, th three wides for Doon, Liam. Yeah, that was much better from Patrick's well. Didn't get do the easy option and give away the free. Just stayed with Bob Purcell and got the half hook and caused the wide. Puck out, sent down the centre of the field. Jason Gillam rose for it but just couldn't hold possession of it and do now have it with Jack Downey. Launches this one in but he was berated as soon as it left his stick. Dovin O'Grady turned around to him and said, what were you doing shooting from that? A wild shot going to the right-hand side and wide, fourth wide of the night for Dune. And uh, their second in quick succession. As the short puck out, oh, it doesn't go to hand but the very, very lucky to get away with that one of Patrick's well as Paddy Maher brings away this one. Plays it off near side of the field towards Patrick Kirby. In a bit of space, Kirby from the 65 opens the shoulders and strikes it in. The well needed a score and that's well worked one. Patrick Kirby getting it, Kieran. Yeah, great score and well worked from the goalkeeper to the cornerback. Out to the halfback midfield into Patrick straight over the, straight over the bar. But it's a score that Patrick, Patrick's well needed badly. 14-12, two between them as the puck out goes short and second phase goes long if you like it's gathered back there underneath it Keen Fitzgerald pops this one towards the far side now up in front of Ar Jason Galan lays it off near side of the field the referee said he's thrown the ball on the halfway line and it's going to be a free free going in favour of Dune and I suppose look everybody under a bit of pressure makes mistakes like that and that certainly was a mistake from Jason Galan he knew the minute it left his hand that He'd thrown it, and in fairness to Jonathan Hayes, the referee, he was right up on top of it, and the free going in favour of Dune, and an opportunity for them now to go three points to the good, yet again. And Jack Ryan, well, one free to his name in the second half from well inside his own half. This a good bit closer. Seven points so far tonight. 
this would be his eighth of a total of 15 if this goes over the crossbar for Dune. As Jack Ryan strikes this one in, umpires have a good look at it, but say it's gone to the right hand side and wide. Fifth wide of the night from a Dune point of view. Uncharacteristic there from Bob or from Jack Ryan. Yeah, two wides from Freeze Lane. Just you not know, disappointed from him given the one he landed before that was from his own 65, you know, but two point game, probably a big bit of a boost for Patrick as well. You know, that, that point from Patrick Kirby may have lifted him a little bit you know there was a few fist pumps winning that side and cut down in front of us as well so maybe just a bit of a boost they needed patrick kirby to take the line ball then for patrick's well in front of his manager who watches on and directs everything from this near sideline he told us earlier he's just a facilitator he's not the manager of this team as the ball is back there with dune adam crow it was that was coming away with it but great pressure applied on adam crow and the referee awards the free in for Patrick's well. Great pressure, Kieran. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, and a well earned, earned free. And Josh Constantine in the middle of it as well. Uh, he might have been the whole pile in the play, but you know, there was serious pressure there. And a few all roars from the line, I think, made the referee's mind up. But it's definitely a score that Patrick's well could do, but to turn it into a one point game. Always helps to sow the seed of doubt in the referee's mind when a, a roar or two comes from the sideline. Minus the supporters tonight, of course, as Jason Gallant. Five points in the first half, four of them from freeze and one from open play. He'll be hoping to add to that tally and reduce the deficit to just a single solitary point here as it's going to be taken just a couple of yards in from the sideline. Looks to the target on the city end goal as he strikes that one. That is meticulous from Jason Galan. It's another one for him. It's six in the night. Five from Freeze, and the gap is back to just a single solitary point again. And after all, Dune's great start to the second half. The well certainly aren't going to be pushed over all that easily, it appears tonight. The ball comes out over this near sideline. Last touch, the Patrick's well, man. It's going to be a line ball. Well, Dunnacaw Callaghan, I think, is saying that he can't decide whose line ball it is, so it's going to be a throwing ball. No real objection from either side. A little bit of pulling and dragging going on there between Jack Ryan and Keane Inright. They're well able to look after themselves as the referee throws in the slitter, breaks behind them all and eventually picked up there and brought away by Keane O'Donovan. Might have gotten a slap as he was going through. Sends that one in. The referee has said it's going to be a free. It went to the right-hand side and wide. And, uh, well, Keane Inright having a word with uh, referee Jonathan Hayes, wondering why that free was awarded. I think if you look up the definition of a free in the dictionary, you might see a picture of that one. But free going in favour of Dune on this near side. Just a couple in from the sideline and an opportunity for them to extend the lead still further. 14-13. And that was a silly free, Kieran. Yeah, a cheap free now, really. Yeah. You know, your man was after taking a shot. He was going over. Just kind of shade him out. Be nice and cool. But a stupid tap down and another opportunity. I see Aaron Galeno is going in corner forward. And Daniel Fisi is... Uh, Jason, sorry. Jason is going in corner forward and Daniel Feesey is coming out centre forward and if Jason gets half a chance he will score a goal or two inside if it comes into him. There'd be objections if it was Aaron. Would you? As here comes the free for Jack Ryan as he strikes this one in. It hits the upright and comes back down. The referee blew the whistle but uh, I think he thought it was going over the crossbar. He's given a free out anyway for Patrick Swell. Rare enough that you see a free like that hitting the upright and Jonathan Hayes I think had penciled it in for either a point or a wide but yeah, comes back down free out yeah a bit premature with the whistle on that occasion the players thankfully didn't stop they saw Kieran be happy at his manager the players didn't they were on their feet and on their toes so nothing happened thank god we could have had a dispute a goal or something that it's the last thing we need Liam is a bit of controversy oh the line ball was won by Patrick Kirby down here beneath us and in his haste to take the quick line ball to Keane Enright he's put it right out over this near stand sideline little Bits like that, I suppose, Kieran showed the perhaps lack of experience from a, a couple of players, but still, look, I suppose, under 21, they'll learn from that. Yeah, a bit unlucky. He tried to do the right thing, really, I suppose, and just wasn't fully concentrating the focus on the sideline ball, and obviously, he's after giving the advantage straight back to Doom. But, you know, it's all about the next ball now. The next ball and the next ball. 
Chris Thomas to take this line ball for Dune. Not the best across the uh, cut, but it's uh, well won by Bob Purcell, who's under a bit of pressure. Lays the ball across the centre towards Jack Downey, taken away from him by Patrick Kirby, who's done well to recover. Lays this back as far as Josh Considine on the ground. The referee says no free forthcoming. Patrick Kirby in possession of it, plays this one forward towards the far side. And it's the man that came on at half time, Daniel Fisi, who just couldn't control it. And instead, the ball played forward. The Patrick's well man might have taken a, a, a dump there just completely accidental as the doom man goes forward with that one down that far side it was Dovin O'Grady got a fair shoulder ended up on the ground back as far as Adam English who strikes that one in but it goes to the right hand side and wide that's the sixth wide of the night for Doom. they're fourth of the second half they're guilty of hitting a few bad wides now yeah but in fairness to Patrick's well when the ball is going in kind of 50-50 they're managing them but it's, uh, it's our half forward and any time there's a puck out, there's about four of them after coming down the row and all our backs really want is for the ball to stick, to take a small bit of pressure on them and uh, put the opposition under pressure. And to be fair, our defenders are doing it all the time. Any time they're putting it under, under pressure, the ball is inevitably gone wide. I think it's Josh Considine that's down receiving treatment on the far side. It was just as the Dune man was striking the ball. He slipped into it. Yeah, mm. yeah. The hurley came across the head. Nothing at all deliberate, but the referee has decided to give a yellow card for it. Blatant accident actually slipped into I'd say he lost it uh, because of the ground. The underground was a bit slippy. And Chris Burkery has picked up a yellow card for something or other anyway. I hope it wasn't for that uh, incident, but it's a free it's a yellow card nonetheless. So we're almost at the midway point of the second half, one between them. Hard to call this one still, John. Oh it is, Liam, you know. Dune Do- had their period at the start of the half. You know, a little bit of damage they're taking, are they gonna pull away? Patrick's well came straight back, back. but Kieran's point at the Patrick's well half forward line, they need to do a lot more. Mike O'Brien dominating at centre back has facilitated Jason's move to the edge of the square, so we'll see if they go that bit more direct in for the rest of the game. Killian O'Reilly's puck out may work out for Patrick's well. Low ball direct inside this time. Nobody at home though from a Patrick's well point of view, and it's Dune who come away with this one as they bring this one, Jack Downey. Off he lays it as far as Dovin O'Grady, the joint captain, taken, flicked away from him brilliantly by Patrick Kirby. Might break there in favour of Key and Inright. It does, and Inright, in possession of it, comes away with this one towards the defensive 65. Plays this one forward. It's gathered there. Going forward with this one now is Owen Harmon. On towards the attacking 45. Left the slitter behind him, though. And Dune pick this one up, and away they come with it now. Launching it clear towards this near side of the field. On the 21, out in front of his man. Did everything right, but just couldn't control it, Jack Ryan, and it comes out over this near stand sideline for a line ball going in favour of Patrick's well. There's a substitution going to be made by Doon. Ivan O'Dwyer is the man that's coming on. And we'll see who's going off in just a moment. I think it might be Adam Crow that's making his way off down here beneath us. It is. So 17 Ivan O'Dwyer is on, and Adam Crow is off in a change in the doing full forward line we're at the midway point of the second half one between them 14 13 we were level at the water break in the first half the ball has come out over this near stand sideline and it's gone for a line ball in favor of Dune. we're approaching the water break in the second half now as well and the line ball going to be taken by chris thomas away to our left hand side right hand side i should say thomas takes a good cut of a ball high almost above the Mackey stand here in the LIT Gaelic rounds, picked up and brought away by Keen Fitzgerald. Lays this one towards the far side. Calvin Carroll under a bit of pressure, right in the halfway line. Referee almost gets in the way, but Carroll uses him to his advantage, gives the pass away. The well might take the free. They've gotten the free, and it's an opportunity here, 60 yards out from goal for Jason Gillan to level things up again. I mentioned we were level at the water break in the first half. Not going to put a curse on him but you would fancy this that will be level at the water break in the second half here as well now as Jason Gillan six points to his name so far five from freeze striking this one into the city in goal 14 to Dune 13 to Patrick's well 16 almost 70 minutes played of the second half here the Mint Catering Premier Under-21 hurling final as Galan strikes that one and sends it over the crossbar. We are at the water break. We find ourselves level. We were level at the start. We were level at the water break in the first half. We were level at half time. We're level at the, ha- at the water break in the second half. Kieran, this is an intriguing Premier Under-21 hurling final. Yeah, without a doubt. And we don't need a spirit level to know that we're level. 
<laughs> yeah, very good. I have to say there, yeah, great play out of Keane Fitz. And, you know, John remarked there on uh, the centre-back for Doon, Michael Bryan, how well he's playing. But equally, the Patrick Swell six is fierce composed, very comfortable on the ball and hasn't made a mistake yet. Now, but we're coming into the final quarter, and I suppose realistically, I think my gut feeling is telling me whoever will raise a green flag first will probably push on and uh, win the game. But outside of that, it's going to be hard to call because, to be fair to Doon, they look the stronger of the two teams there. They seem, they seem to be uh, managing that ha- quarter better. But Patrick Swell came into it in the last few minutes. Eight to ten minutes gone in the f- second half there, John. You'd say Doon are going to win this one. or uh, Doon were looking good. They went three points ahead. And then Patrick Swell just kept coming back at them. And we find ourselves level again. Yeah, it's on a knife edge, Liam. Great credit to you to Patrick Swell. A lot of teams would have, under that kind of pressure that Doom put in in the first 10 minutes of this half, would have wilted. Patrick Swell haven't, you know, you see the, the same. I don't know, hopefully it's not coming through on the, on the <laughs> microphones. What's been said in the Patrick Swell huddle um, at this water break. Look, they're well up for it going into the, this 15 minutes. You just hope to keep that bit of composure and not lose the head. They're exactly where they want it to be. And I suppose from a Doom point of view, We'll see now just exactly what they're made of. You know, a lot of people talking about doing two in a row coming in here tonight. Raging hot favourites. This last 15 minutes is set up to absolute perfection from a neutral point of view, certainly. And just bring it on, I suppose. And it's hard to call a winner from here. Oh, it is. Doon now, a lot of these lads were on that Doon team that beat Napierschik last year. It was a huge win for them over Napierschik. You know, they'd, they'd lost the Napierschik in finals for six, seven years before that at 21 and minor. You know, maybe they've just taken the foot off the pedal. It's not in the piercing. The monkey's off their back. Look, they've got to this final. It's all about now the last quarter. And as you said, Liam, it's rightly set up for it. It sure is. As the puck out comes from Dara Ryan. Sends it down this near side of the field. The last 15 minutes of the season for both Patrick's Well and Doon in the Premier Under-21 Hurling Championship. And a, a most bizarre of years. And a competition which, of course, was initially run in February. And here we are in the middle to end of August playing the county final not too many would have thought that would have been the case as that ball is sent in it goes to the left hand side and wide for Dune seventh wide of the game for them Patrick's well have hit five wides well it's going to come down to small margins Kieran Carey has mentioned that whoever gets the goal will certainly fancy their chances of going on to win this mint catering premier under 21 hurling championship would you rule out an extra couple of euro having to go into the electricity meter for the floodlights for extra time you certainly wouldn't here tonight as the ball sent down this center of the field doon win possession of it they come away with it referee has said a foul on the doom man as he was bringing that one away and that's eddie stokes back in his own half back line free going in favor of doon and every little decision now is probably going to be contested here on because we're coming down to fine margins without a doubt and even one or two little sideline balls where a small bit of composure has come up gone against patrick swell latimer fallen and you know when i kind of see that in an old game it could be kind of slipping so you know as a, with my own personal opinion this whatever team is the most disciplined here in the final quarter i'd imagine will jump the fence free then for doon and an opportunity for jack ryan who was unerring in the first half just a couple of wides in the second half from freeze but this one well inside he's on 65 as you can see there on the camera work here is the opportunity going to come from jack ryan picks this one and strikes it from his own 65 as he struck it it's high into the night sky but it's gone to the right hand side and wide again another wide for the dune men that's the eighth wide of the game and the Nice level increases from the Patrick's well bench beneath us, Johnny. It does, yeah. It's another one from Jack Ryan. You know, he's been as three wides from freeze. Look, two of the ones he's missed from very long range. You wouldn't hold that against them. But in the last, in the final stages of a, of a championship final game, they're crucial wides. Mikey O'Brien launched that one, or it was uh, Keane Fitzgerald that launched that one forward, one at the opposite end of the field by Doom, but the clearance doesn't quite find the red jersey. Where's the ball going to break? It's in the hand at the moment of Eddie Stokes. He's lost it, and Josh Considine was going through. He was fouled. I wasn't sure if the referee spotted it, but he did, and he's given the free for Patrick Swell on the 65-yard line. We spoke about composure, and we spoke about the little things that are going to change this game, and Dovin O'Grady's little dunt there to his opposite number Josh Considine could be a costly one because Jason Galan their brother Aaron is in inside there just having a a chat in fairness to Josh 
in fairness to Josh up until this point he's having a powerhouse of a game and uh, you know no different to doing if Patrick Swell are going to f- cross the line Josh Considine Jason Galan, Keane Fitz Patrick Kirby they'll all have to come to the party in the last 10 minutes and if they do they're there with a great chance so Josh Considine down receiving treatment Aaron had the operation his finger I think Kieran didn't he he, ha- he didn't have the operation. He actually no. he went up to, to Galway and met the consultant. And, you know, there was, a, there was a possibility it was going to be two different procedures. And as it, as it turned out, thank God, when they opened the finger up, they found some kind of a, a chip off a bone alongside his tendon. So they took that out, cleaned up his finger, stitched back his finger, stitched back the hand. So he didn't need a full operation at all, thank God. Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> Here it comes for Jason Galan from the 65-yard line into the goal to our right hand side and an opportunity here now to put Patrick's well into the lead it looks to be good it is right between the uprights and Jason Galan has put Patrick's well into the lead eight points tonight seven of them from freeze and Patrick's well ahead by one 15 to 14 the puck out sent down this near side of the field now it's right in the melting pot as Potty Marr plays it towards this near side John Kirby tight to the sideline striking it up this near side Daniel Fisi puts up the hand breaks behind him and in there to win it Mikey O'Brien can't get it into the hand cleanly instead it's broken away and won by Josh Considine under a bit of pressure pops the ball up into the stick of Jason Galan loses his footing at the vital moment he might be pinned for over carrying the referee has said he hasn't it's on the ground he let go of it and now there's a scrum breaking out it's going to be a throw in ball just on the 65 yard line margins are very very tight at this stage either side 54 minutes played six to go plus stoppage time not sure if the stopwatch was stopped for the uh, water break in the second half i don't think it was as the ball sent near side of the field here it comes gathered down here by john kirby plays this across the center towards jason galan from the halfway line opens the shoulders does galan but it goes to the left hand side and eventually trickles left and wide sixth wide of the night for the well on the wides count eight to dune six to patrick's well the short puck out one by dune as they come away with it now pressure on possession now vital as the ball played forward towards this near side flick away is good from potty mar to adam carrig who's well blocked down ball breaks away there and in there trying to win it as jack downey gets the pass away it does downey in possession of it now is adam english english turns and strikes this screaming for it was bob purcell on this near side goalkeeper puts up the hand killian o'reilly and o'reilly comes away with this one the clearance is completed for patrick's well towards the halfway line brilliantly caught in the air by chris thomas for dune plays it forward now on towards the attacking 45 opportunity for jack downey who strikes it in and jack downey levels us up again with four and a half minutes of normal time left we're level again john kyo Brilliant work from Jack Downey Liam. It was good work initially from Chris Thomas at wing back. Caught a brilliant clearance from Killian O'Reilly. Had the sense to look up rather than just launch it back inside. And brilliant work from Jack Downey. And anyone who's watching outside of Dune and Ula may not remember Jack Downey for a, an under 20 game a couple of years ago. Last minute 45 beat Tipperary for Limerick. Ball down that far side of the field. It's gathered over there by Jason Galan, who's back in his own half-back line, sleeping up possession of it. Away come Patrick's well towards the attacking 65. Space breaks out now towards John Kirby. Three points to his name tonight. Make that four. Super response from the underdogs. And Patrick's well, Kieran Carey, are back in the lead. Yeah, great play out of Jason there. He took a bit of authority, won the ball, popped it to Calvin. Calvin went off and run. Popped it out to John Kirby, one looking straight over the bar. Great score. Darren Ryan's puck out down the far side of the field. Patrick's well through Keen Fitzgerald picking up possession of this one. Tight towards that far uncovered stand sideline. Gets the hand pass away as far as Adam Carrick. Sets off on a run past the 65. Past halfway towards the attacking 65. Gets the pass forward. Try to uh, get onto it inside there was Daniel Fisi away from him though. Doom come away with it. Foul conceded back in the half back line free going in favour of Dune opportunity for them they're in an awful hurry to take it the referee has said he's going to bring it forward a couple of uh, metres because Mikey O'Brien who was in a hurry to take it wasn't left do so three minutes and as many seconds according to the official stopwatch 16-15 one between them Patrick's well lead by one but Dune have a free inside their own 65 yard line and Cormac Ryan is going to take this one Jack Ryan took them earlier from inside one pretty much from exactly there at the start of the second half that went 
I think between the uprights and another one that went a couple of metres wide, but here it is now for Cormac Ryan. Going to strike this one. Almost on the halfway line as he strikes it. The distance is good, as is the accuracy. Like a, a laser between the uprights, and Cormac Ryan gets his first point of the evening. And Patrick Sweller making a substitution. Clive Kirby is coming on. And that was a great call out of Dune, to be fair. Sometimes it can be difficult or tough to change your free taker. And uh, in fairness to Cormac Ryan, as he was rising, it, it never looked in question. So we're level again. A substitution has been made, and I think the Patrick Swell player gone off inside there. Is it Gavin Carey that's gone off? It is. So play resumes with the short puck out. And Patrick Swell go along at the second time, launching this one forward. Back goes Eddie Stokes, wins possession of it for Dune. Hand pass off now, and Dune come away with this one towards the defensive 65. Pass away, finds Adam English down right here in front of us. English looks up for the option, plays it into space. That's good work, good composure there as the effort comes in now from Jack Downey, but he sends it to the left hand side and wide. That is Dune's ninth wide of the game. I spoke about composure there. Nine wides for Dune, John Kyo. They could rule those yet. Yeah, it's just, it's crept up with a sharp puck out, goes wrong, Liam, big chance it here. It does, as Dune have it here now, opportunity, Jack Ryan just couldn't control it, and Patrick's well breathe a huge sigh of relief, danger still not averted, as the opportunity still in the hands of the Dune man, across the centre it goes now, Downey again, half blocked down as he took the shot, and it's Killian O'Reilly who has it, he's half blocked down as his clearance goes away. It's like a game of tennis, inside and over and back in around the 21. Here's an opportunity now for Jack Downey who strikes it in. And Jack Downey puts it between the uprights and Doom go into the lead. At a crucial time, Jack Downey with his second point since being brought on as a substitute. And Doom lead Kieran 17-16. Yeah, and that all came from an error from the goalkeeper, you know, and Patrick Swell had two or three opportunities to get rid of it. But uh, a great score by Young Downey, that's two points he's after getting since he came on. Ball sent across the far side of the field and Patrick Swell looking to race onto this one over there. Clive Kirby gathers possession of it into the hand, looks up for the option, L pops the pass. That's well played inside towards Calvin Carroll who runs onto it, slips at the vital moment on the 21. Two Dune men around him, gets the hand pass away as far as Harmon. Still in possession of it, looks up for the support. He's got it across the centre, that's Josh Considine, just over the head of Considine. And Considine has to do a lot of work to win possession of it, which he does. He's got support across the centre. Considine goes to ground. No free forthcoming. Great defence by Dune. Still in the hand of Considine, though. Gets it away as far as Shane Hannon. Further down this near side towards John Kirby. Does exceptionally well to keep it in play. Taken off his stick from Mikey O'Brien. Kirby knocked out over this near stand sideline. It's everything being pumped forward now. And it's a line ball for Patrick Swell. And Jason Galan has come to take it on this near side from the 13-yard line. Surely, Kieran, he can't score from here. Yeah, he's at a very, very tight angle. But I'd have to say, super defending there, or the, the Dune centre-back, how he played John Kirby. No, I wouldn't be even going for this. Across the 21 is the place for it. Short he goes. It's won there now by John Kirby, striking this one in. But across the face of goal it goes, and wide. Seventh wide of the night for Patrick Swell. And still, there's a point between them. 17 to Dune, 16 to Patrick's well. We're into the stoppage time. It's at the discretion now of referee Jonathan Hayes, but we had a two minute water break there or thereabouts, so we'll probably see another minute at least as the puck out comes from Dara Ryan. Sent down this near side of the field. Ball bounces gratefully into the hands of Ivan O'Dwyer, who goes forward with this one. Onto the 21, gets the hand pass away. Cut out back there, a vital interception for Patrick's well. And they bring this one clear to the 45. The clearance not into the hand though of a Patrick's well man, and instead it's Dune who have it. Was that ball thrown? That's the view of the Patrick's well management but Adam English has put it between the uprights a two point lead now for Doom their experience beginning to tell here 18-16 two between them we said a goal would be crucial it looks like Patrick's well need one now as the puck out simp near side of the field won there by Jason Galan on his hands and knees under pressure in to offer support goes Joachim McGrath away from him though for Doom and played forward towards this near side of the field in it breaks towards Bob Purcell almost on the end line now almost on the sideline looks up for the support good ball back as far as Keno Donovan Past him though, into the hand of Adam English. English 45 out from goal, striking this in. Full back and goalkeeper watch it. It's the 
Back that comes away with it for Patrick Swell. And that is in the shape of Kean Fitzgerald. Launches it forward. Fortunately, into the hands of Potty Maher. Now towards Jason Galan. Launching it forward. One Patrick Swell man inside there. The ball batted down and broken by Dune. They bring this one away towards the defensive 45. Dune by two. 18 to 16. Deep in stoppage time. In the Mint Catering Premier Under 21 hurling final of 2020. The ball in the hands of Dune and Dublin O'Grady. Over carried it, says the referee. Free him for Patrick Swell and that famous song, It's Now or Never, Kieran Carey. Yeah, uh, it's a bread and butter free now, to be fair, but great pressure on Patrick Swell. But to be fair, Dune had probably one or two chances to kind of come up another old score, so nice bit of pressure on Jason now, but I'd, I'd expect him to put it over the bar. Well, I've no doubt he had a chat with Jonathan Hayes and asked him what was on the stopwatch. That would have been the sensible to, thing to do, and well, Jason, I'm sure, did exactly that. It's a free. There'll probably be another play at least anyway, you would imagine, after this puck out. But we'll wait and see. If it drops in or around the house, we'll know that there isn't much time left. But if it goes over the crossbar, the well will be hoping to have one last chance. And it looks as though he's going to take the point as Jason Galan strikes that one in. It goes in. It goes high. And it goes over the crossbar. One point game, John Kyo. Possession vital now. Huge, Liam. Just in the last couple of minutes, we asked... We asked earlier about what Doom could do in the final quarter. Last five minutes or so, they've really stood up, and Adam English for that point to put it two ahead. But we're still going. Brilliant take from Potty Maher, I think it was. Lays off as far as Calvin Carroll. Carroll going through onto the 45, still going to the 21. Might need to get the ball away. Sends this one in, going to drop into the hand of the goalkeeper. Was that Patrick Wells chance for a leveller? Still we play on. The ball breaks down the far side of the field. Over there winning possession of this one is Adam Carrig. Tight towards the sideline. Forward towards Josh Considine. From that far sideline. Lays it off towards a own Hannah Harmon. Harmon loses possession of it and Dune come away with it. Referee has a look at the watch. Looks around as this one is launched forward by Jack Ryan. Again, it's going to drop on the 65-yard line. Dune have possession of it. There is the final whistle. It is two in a row for Dune. They've been made to fight hugely for this one. It's been a cracking mint catering under 21 Premier Hurling ta- Championship final. But Dune it is, Kieran Carey, who win it by a point and probably in the balance of play over the 60 minutes, deserving of it. Yeah, and to be fair, your destiny sometimes isn't your destiny and Patrick's well had two opportunities there in the last minute probably to draw it and it didn't work in their favour and uh, yeah, without a Dune, they're, wor- they're worthy champions Dune are and I suppose really their experience the last two or three years and winning it last year stood to them hugely for the last quarter and probably that, ha- that was hugely influential on them winning today. Well, it's been a fantastic victory for Dune. It's been a, a cracking match, though, in fairness, Kieran. It's been a great advertisement for the uh, Under-21 Premier Championship here in Limerick and Dune eventually winning it out, but it's been a cracking game. Yeah, without a doubt. And, you know, to, in fairness to the referee, he's pay, he played his partner as well. You know, he didn't want to be seen. He did the right thing. Usually when referees highlight themselves, you know, they might be fully tuned in, but as you rightly pointed out, as 21 finals go, it was a top-class game. It was supposed to be one of those finals. It's kind of sad to see anybody lose, but at the end of the day, you must have a winner. And uh, it was Dune's turn today. It sure was. And John Kyo, I suppose, in terms of county finals, we couldn't have asked for a better one. Dune probably shown that little bit more experience, having been there last year and having won it last year, probably won it for them again this year. Yeah, th- just that little bit of experience at this very stage. A lot of that Patrick's Well team underage again next year, you know. But you just have to give it to Dune, really. Like they, it w- they were up against it at times during the game. Patrick's Well came with everything, you know. Keane Fitzgerald, the centre back, as Kieran mentioned in the commentary, outstanding. Several others outstanding as well. But just the hunger Dune showed in the last five minutes or so. They're heading into at a time. They got that two point lead. They never looked like leave- losing it. And I suppose you look at the changes that were made as well. Jack Downey coming off the bench, getting a couple of points. That was a big telling point too, Kieran. Usually, when you bring a sub in, like you're obviously hoping to improve the situation. And when a sub comes on, especially in a tight game like this, and gets two scores, two great scores, had a huge bearing on Doom crossing the line today. But as I said, you know, Patrick Swell had a few chances there near the end and didn't take them. And, you know, definitely... Definitely, without uh, without a doubt, it's the the maturity of doing and winning it last year. What's a huge had a huge impact 
on him winning it again this year. But as you rightly pointed out, it was a super advertisement for under-21 that particular grade because, as I said earlier on, sometimes it goes under the radar and possibly after tonight it shouldn't go under the radar because it was a quality game and quality, quality scores from both sides. And I suppose a, a championship that many people thought might never get finished after starting so early in the year, it's great to see it finished. And as we say, John, great to see such a high-quality final to finish off the year. Number one, Liam, you're right. It is great to see it. the fact that we could finish the championship is fantastic. As you mentioned in the commentary as well, started in February as the lights go out in the LIT Gaelic rounds. But you know, it's, it, it's look, Kieran mentioned a fantastic advertisement for the under 21 grade that doesn't maybe get the attention it deserves mm. in both codes throughout the year. And you know, look, from Dune's point of view, Paddy Coleman, when we go down talking to him in a few minutes, he'd be a fairly happy man. He might say a few words to us, I'm sure, after this one, but it's uh, Dune who end up victorious in the Premier Under-21 Championship. It's a pity, I know there's probably a lot of you out there that would have loved to have been here to share in this moment with Dune, and indeed Patrick's well as well, I suppose, in terms of their defeat, Kieran, They'll be disappointed out in the well, but learn an awful lot from it yeah without a doubt and and to be fair Dune I'd say the majority of the Dune team probably would have been closer to that age because Patrick's well have a very young side and uh, you know they had, they had a super year and uh, their year isn't over yet because a lot of these guys will automatically fall into junior A hurling and a good share of them will fall into senior hurling as well so you know no, they, they have no need to keep their heads down uh, whatsoever because they played a huge part in the final tonight and at the end of the day it was very nearly a toss of a kind it was that close well I know it's not the same as being here but hopefully you watching at home you've enjoyed the coverage and hopefully we've brought it to you as good as we could as the cup is raised down here beneath us by the Dune joint captains Porrig Ryan and Duvan O'Grady the two of them raised the trophy aloft I don't know which one of them is going to talk but uh, well it's been a good night for Dune they are the county premier under 21 hurling champions my thanks to John Kyo and Kieran Carey for analysis this evening on what's been a cracking night but tonight is Dune's night they are the county premier under 21 champions from us all in the LIT Gaelic grounds good night